Have you ever wondered why various audio devices need different types of amplification or why plugging a microphone straight into a speaker doesn't work? If you're just starting out in audio engineering, understanding signal levels is crucial. So let's break it all down so your recording sound clean and your gear works exactly as it should. Hi everybody, I'm Todd and I hope you're having a great day. As an audio engineer in professional audio, you'll typically deal with five types of signal levels. Mic level, instrument level, line level, headphone level, and speaker level. These signals represent different strengths or audio voltage that's needed to be properly controlled before it can be used effectively. So let's go through each one and we'll talk about how they compare and when they're used. Now we'll start with microphone or mic level. As I've explained in other videos, a microphone captures sound by converting air pressure changes into weak electrical currents. These currents are known as mic level signal and they generally range between about minus 60 and minus 40 dBV or 1 to 10 millivolts. Now we'll get more into detail about various dB scales in a future video, but for now understand that this signal is too weak to be used directly into a mixing console or audio interface, so we use a microphone preamp to boost up that level. Now sometimes the preamp is built into other devices, but it's definitely an important stage between one and the other. Now a typical setup for recording or live sound with a microphone includes a mic level signal being sent to a preamp which amplifies it before feeding it into a mixing console or audio interface and then onto a DAW for processing or an amplifier to drive speakers for live sound. Next we have instrument level. Now electric guitars and basses are common examples of instruments that output at instrument levels. These levels are stronger than mic level but weaker than line level. Instrument levels are typically between about minus 30 and minus 20 dBU, or between 50 and a few hundred millivolts. Now, similar to microphones, these signals require amplification before they can be properly processed. So instruments are typically plugged into an instrument amplifier for live sound or recording with microphones, or into a DI box, direct input, and then a preamp to boost them up to line level, making them usable for mixers, audio interfaces, or even amplifiers for live sound. If you want to learn more about DI boxes, check out the video I've linked at the end. Think about an instrument amplifier such as a guitar amp combo as an all-in-one solution to bring instrument level all the way up to speaker level. A guitar amp or head does the same thing but requires external speakers to make sound. Now let's talk about line level and this one's really commonly used. Once a signal is brought up to line level, it's strong enough to be used with mixing consoles, audio interfaces, outboard gear and amplifiers. Line level is the standard signal strength for pro audio equipment, making it ideal for routing sound between devices. Now you'll often hear about professional line level as being plus four dBU and consumer line level as being minus 10 dBV. You can think of these as representing different signal voltages with consumer being approximately 0.316 volts and pro being around 1.25 volts. In short, pro level signals are higher than consumer level signals. Sometimes we call them hotter signals. As an example in pro audio, a synthesizer, mixer, audio interface, these output at line level, allowing them to send a clean, balanced signal to speakers or recording gear without requiring additional boosting. We'll discuss the advantages and uses of balanced versus unbalanced signals in another video. Next up is headphone level, kind of lesser known and lesser talked about, but it's essential to understand. A good way for beginners to think about headphone level is as a boosted version of line level that's strong enough to drive small speakers inside headphones. Now headphone level is often between about 1 and 3 volts RMS, with the output level being provided by the amplifier being impedance dependent. So you'll often hear headphone power requirements expressed as watts or milliwatts required to provide a certain sound pressure level. Due to the similarity in line and headphone level, you'll also often see connections on portable devices used to provide both headphone and line level output. Fun fact, we often talk about using headphone amplifiers to boost line level signals so we can drive high impedance studio headphones for detailed critical listening. Driving headphones is a bit more complicated than impedance alone, but having the ability to create a strong enough headphone level means we can drive headphones to provide a clean, dynamic and loud sound. Speaker level is an important topic for studio monitoring and live sound. While line level is good for transferring signal, it's not strong enough to power a speaker on its own. That's where a power amplifier comes in. It takes a line level signal and amplifies it to speaker level, which is strong enough to move the drivers in a speaker and produce sound. Speaker level strength is the widest range of all levels used in audio. 
It's often described in watts for a specific impedance. For example, a 1000 watts feeding an 8 ohm speaker load is equivalent to about 89.4 volts. Small speakers may require only a few volts, but large speakers often require 50 to 100 volts to produce loud listening levels. Now, sometimes the amplifier and speakers are separate, but we commonly use powered speakers, which are essentially a speaker with a built-in amplifier in both studios and live sound applications. Each approach has advantages and disadvantages, and we'll get into that in a future dedicated video. As an audio engineer, to ensure your studio or live show runs smoothly with the best possible sound, it's vital for you to understand the various signal levels we use to send audio between microphones, instruments, preamps, mixers, outboard gear, amplifiers, headphones, and speakers. If you'd like to know more about topics related to studio and live sound, check out one of the videos on the screen. As always, it's been great having you here today, and I will see you next time.